What's up guys? So as you can tell I've done quite a bit of work on this side of the layout, or at least this section of the layout. I uh, finished the road, which is the first road that I've actually paved, and I'm really pleased with the outcome of it. It took a little longer than I thought it would, and had to redo a few things, but I'm really pleased with how it came out, and uh, it represents Meadow Road, which is a road that runs next at the uh, yard in Asheville, North Carolina. Um, this bridge actually kind of represents the bridge that runs across the east side of the yard. So that's what we'll kind of call it. So that's Metal Road. But today's video I'm going to uh, paint some uh, cable unit track where I installed a yard lead here. And uh, it's kind of needing some weathering because I don't know if you can see from that angle but it stands out like a sore thumb. So I'm going to show you guys how I weather my track using an airbrush today. Let's go ahead and get to that. Here's the uh, section of track that uh, we're going to weather today. It's a switch, so I'm going to show you guys how to weather around the switch. Um, and also two straight pieces. I'm going to have to weather that part eventually when I get the, the track, but I'm kind of holding off from buying any more track or really buying anything that needs to be shipped to me for a while, which I will get to eventually. Um, but anyway, we're going to weather this section of track, so let me go ahead and get my supplies and show you what you need, and let's get to it. Okay, here's the uh, supplies you're going to need to weather your track. You're going to need an airbrush, gloves, airbrush paint holder, painter's tape, liquid tex airbrush medium, and you're going to need an air compressor. Also, you're going to need, um, I use rail brown for my weathering. I know a lot of people use like rail tie brown and stuff like that. Um, but I personally am not a big fan of the flow quill just because it's, um, not acrylic based so it is really really tough to clean off stuff um, but it's what I've got on hand because I accidentally bought it one time not getting them confused um, but I prefer the polyscale brand as it's acrylic based and it's easier to clean up um, if you get it on your hands um, you get it on let's say in your airbrush for instance it's way easier to clean this is tough to clean out so my advice is get the Polyscale Rail Tie Brown, I think is the color. Um, but for if you're going to use Flow Coil, get Rail Brown. It works just as fine. So uh, let me load this up into the airbrush and let's get the weather. All right, you're going to need to uh, mask off your switch points because you do not want to get paint in that. That will be a pain in the butt to get off. So let's go ahead and mask that up. And now that that's masked off, you got to uh, mask the switch point as well, where it flips over. There we go. And don't worry, we'll go back over this once we get it all airbrushed. This is just to, you know, protect what we don't want to paint in. And I'm going to go ahead and mask some of these other ones off just because I really don't want to get overspray on them either. So let me go ahead and do that and uh, I'll come back to you guys. Alright, now that our uh, track is masked off to where we don't want to get the paint, which is our switch points and the uh, part where the frog turns, let me uh, go ahead and put some gloves on. Gloves on. And then let me go ahead and pour some in here, some of paint. And this stuff has a really strong smell too. That's another bad part about Floquil. Shake this up a little bit. Now we're only gonna put like a few drops in here just to kind of make this flow better through the airbrush. There we go. And we're going to put the cap back on. Hook our airbrush up to the air. Take the cap off the airbrush. Then hook that into that. And test your air spray out. Ooh, that's too, too much. You don't want a lot spraying out. You just want a little bit. Like that. Probably good right there. Alrighty. So once you've tested out your spray, you're gonna go ahead and 
Make sure you have your fan open, a window open while you're doing this because it is strong. And then you're going to want to bail out of the train. I mean, just not run out, but you're just going to be out of it for a little while because it will make you nauseous. So uh, let me start. I start off with, uh, I go down the sides first and then I come up the middle. So let's go ahead and start on it. That's not enough. All right, here we go. airbrushed and now we're just gonna let it dry and I'm gonna get out of the room for a little bit and um, yeah we're gonna let it dry and then we'll come back and uh, do what we need to do. I'm gonna go ahead and clean the airbrush and uh, that way why it's still wet it's easier to get the stuff out. So let me uh, let me do that and uh, I'll come back to you guys and we'll finish this up. Alright now that this is dried for a while alright now that this is dried for a while we're gonna go ahead and pull the tape off because it's not really doing any needed anymore. Pull it off all the places. And uh, Genius Me got my colors mixed up. I actually use rail tie brown, not rail brown. There's there's a difference. But uh, I'm not going to worry about it because once I cover a ballast, I'm not really going to notice. As you can tell here, uh, these are unpainted parts, which we're going to fix that up here right now. Okay, Genius Me um, actually painted this wrong. I actually used Rail Tie Brown originally, not Rail Brown. And Genius Me got it mixed up. So go with Rail Tie Brown, it looks better. But uh, I'm not really gonna worry about it since this is a siding and it's not really the main line. I'm not too worried about it. Um, if it was the main line, I'd repaint it, but it's not. So I'm just gonna go ahead and touch it up and uh, we'll go with that. So let me uh, show you how we do that. And this is where Genius Me forgot to make sure the camera was recording again. So what you see in the previous clip, you're going to take the micro brush, the little yellow thing in my hand, and you're going to use that to paint like you would with a regular paintbrush where the paint isn't. It's pretty much that simple. When you paint on the rail, make sure you don't paint where the, the frog switches touch the rails. And other than that, you're good to go. Just paint where the paint isn't on the switches with the micro brush. All right, as you can tell, I ballasted this track, and it's kind of the next day, but we're going to do this anyway. Um, after you've painted, like I explained in the previous black clip that I forgot to record, you're going to paint the joints, and then once that's all done, you're going to take a bright boy and just rub the top of the rail until you get all the paint off wherever you sprayed. Uh, my advice with flow coil is spray like a few pieces of track, rub it off. Spray a few pieces of track, rub the tops of the rails off. Um, that way it doesn't have a chance to dry because once it dries, flow coil anyway, it's tough to get off. The acrylic base pans are not so tough to get off, so you're good with those. But flow coil, spray a few and get it off. But you're going to take this and then your track should be good to go and you should be able to run a train. And there you have it, weathered Cato Unitrack. It adds a world of realism to the, to the kind of cheap looking 
color of the unit track. Um, you can do this technique with any sort of track. It doesn't have to be Caddy unit track. You can do it with Atlas Code 55, Code 80, uh, Micro Engineering, whatever. Just remember, spray side, side, top. Another technique is uh, Mike Pfeiffer, Pfeiffer Hobby Supply, does this with his kid in your track. He does a wet wash. Um, go check out his video. I think it's uh, How to Ballast Kid in Track. He does that in that video. Um, I'm not sure what my next week video is, but until then, go check out his video. And uh, next Tuesday, I'll post some sort of video on either how I ballast my track personally or uh, some scenery stuff. Because as you can see over there, I'm kind of going full force in some scenery here. So, later guys, have a great week. Don't forget to subscribe. I don't know where the button is right now. Uh, subscribe, like, comment below, share the video amongst your friends and everyone. Uh, follow me on Twitter at Bitter Photo. I post a lot of behind the scenes stuff and just daily happenings of my life, if you're interested in that. Um, Instagram, if you are on that, it's at Bitter Photo as well. Uh, I post a lot of behind the scenes stuff of stuff I'm working on during the week. Um, just stuff that I don't put in a video and um, little projects. Also search Facebook for the uh, Shelby and Hudson Model Rare Group. Send a request and I'll add you on there. That's kind of my Facebook group where I do a lot more behind the scenes stuff and just kind of daily updates. And uh, There's a few other people on there that are really good modelers and we get in discussions and stuff on them. So if you're in the N-Scale, HO, whatever scale you do, you can follow along with this stuff. Later guys.